You are now tuned in to Millennial Hurt. You are now tuned in to Millennial Hurt Podcast. You are now tuned in to Millennial Hurt Podcast. You are now tuned in to Millennial Hurt Podcast. Tuned in, tuned in to Millennial Hurt Podcast. Welcome to a special edition of the Millennial Hurt Podcast. I know you guys haven't seen us in so long and you've been asking what's up with our content. So today it's only right that me and Ari came back together. We're like, like forever. Been a minute for sure. Um, so much has gone on. I'm so happy to see you, partner. Oh my gosh. Um, a lot of great things in our lives, in our personal lives as business partners. Yep. Um, we just wanted to come um, to, you know, come together mm-hmm. um, for the project that show has been wanting to do for Matt. For all, um, forever. <laughs> a mukbang, like the traditional one, a little crab boil, a little seafood boils, you know, some, some drinks, some things that we're going to do and conversation and, you know, just really keep it lighthearted and fun. But yeah, and, and, and of course, have great content. And of course, you know. We always shed light on black businesses, so what we're eating is from a black-owned restaurant. Yeah. So we're gonna give you a review. What we we're wearing. What we're wearing, okay? <laughs> from top to bottom. Top we'll to go into that. Black. Um. um yeah, we'll go into that more. Um, and then yeah, we're gonna talk about the food. We're gonna talk about our clothes. We're gonna talk about what we have going on. Um, and and just really give y'all what we are so happy that. You know, you love is us talking, us chatting, getting the visual, and yeah, we're gonna get into it. Hopefully, y'all leave comments. Um, leave some comments if you're uh, in the conversation, if you like what we're talking about, and you want to, you know, share and join in on it. Definitely drop comments below, and we'll get to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what are we talking about today? Before we get into like, how so we're talking about double standards because a lot has been going on and. There's a lot going on in the media when it comes to male and females and double standards. So yeah. that's going to be our main topic for today. That's good. I'm excited about I'm excited that. We were brainstorming about double standards and, and how it came about. We were like, let's think of a topic for the mother thing. What is something that everybody could kind of chime in on and what's, be, what's fairly like always an evolving conversation as we go, mm-hmm. right? From relationships to work, work. life. To, to family, to friendships. It, it's like the double standards between gender, between genders, between ethnicities, between you know, class, between social class. It's between like race. It it get, it goes deep. So we're gonna get into a few things, but first, what did you wanna what did you wanna go through? We got so we gotta catch up because I wanna know what's <laughs> been up with you. Like, okay, I feel like since TMP, since we took our break, update everyone on what's going on with you. Wait, how long has the break been? <laughs> I feel like, so like, 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 <laughs> like four months. Okay, yeah. Um, we dropped our last. Um, what? How, how many episodes did we drop? Like we we got. First of all, we had three like seasons. We dropped at least thirteen. At least thirteen. Yeah. So season three up to episodes thirteen, one through thirteen, are on Anchor uh, on YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Um, on all pla- all podcast pla- platforms. platforms. So definitely take a look, take a listen if you haven't already. Um, but after that, after we kind of drop those last um, few episodes, and we have more to come, um, I'll drop in episodes for the rest of the year and maybe more. Um, just gotta you know see where y'all at, see yeah. where our listeners are. But ever since we dropped that those last episodes, I just been focused on. Um, you know, doing a kind of a, a little career pivot, okay. a shift, and um, going into uh, a new career field, and 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 all of that, and kind of you know being back to a student of the game. I love media, and I kind of want to see where my new career is going. So I'm not really trying to talk about the specifics, but mm-hmm. I kind of want to see where it's at and see you know how I fit in. But I've been doing that, you know, getting acclimated. Um, media will always be my first love. And, and you just came back from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Like Wall Street. Um, and, and that was media based. Yeah. Like I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma for a black owned media weekend. That was real chill. Um, great uh, people, great food, great atmosphere. It was really all about like black excellence. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of things to love and to also get into like what was going on with the Tulsa 
uh, massacre that happened in 1921. So it was really good, and that was for TMP. And 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 so you know things are happening behind the scenes, and that's what I was really doing. What have you been doing since the break? So since the break, I've been prioritizing my mental health. Um, I got a couple of good opportunities that I can't speak on just yet, but um, basically I'm just elevating and, and the opportunities that I got is definitely helping me with TMP. Great. So um, yeah, just be on the lookout and I will let everyone know when the time is right. I right. can't speak yeah. on it now. But other than that, I've just been working and trying to enjoy the summer. Okay. Well. I appreciate you sharing that and sharing that with the listeners. I hope y'all, you know, and um, don't forget to uh, look over here too, Cheryl. Yeah. That um, that uh, we have been uh, doing this for y'all, like doing this for our 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 fans, our listeners, our, our listeners, supporters, our supporters, and we just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that we're still, uh, you know. Riding for y'all, advocating for our listeners, um, uplifting, uplifting and amplifying black businesses, yeah, and voices. So and being, yeah, the like minded <laughs> bosses, you know, the audio blueprint for like minded bosses, bosses on the rise. So you know, we we just we live it, we speak it, we we tr- we want to be continue to be true to it. And if you are you know a fan uh, like a, a, a supporter of us, we can only encourage you to do the same. Exactly. And also, um, let me just do a shameless plug. Please follow us. Tell your friends to follow us. Um, we're, we're on Patreon at www.patreon backslash the Millennial Podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Our website is www.millennialherpodcast.com. So definitely, you know, come to our landing page and really get to know us by our merch. Up. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Merch. <laughs> we got hats. We, we are, you know, expanding what we have going on our project. So, um, without further ado, we'll go into, like, like all that you can expect. But let's move let's, forward. Let's move forward. Let's jump into the hot topic. Okay. We all got Penelope today, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Too much going on. So, since we're talking about double standards, it's only right, Ari, that we okay. talk about the person who has been changing the rules for double standard. Okay. Miss Lori Harvey. Mm. Mm. So just that's like, my, my little girlfriend in my head. Like, hey girl, I see what you got going on. I see what you been up to. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> so just to kind of catch people up, okay. um, if you don't know what's been going on with her, she was dating Michael B. Jordan. And after a year of dating, they broke up and People Magazine got the exclusive from an insider. They never disclosed who the insider was. You start eating while we're Yeah, doing? go ahead. Oh, why? <laughs> um, but according to the insider, they said that Michael and Lori are both completely heartbroken and that they still love each other. Lori has since deleted all the pictures of Michael B. Jordan on her Instagram account. She did? Yeah. Okay. So that's how you knew it was official because you know every... Go ahead. You know, they were always posting, you know, what, what, what do they call turtle and nugget date night <laughs> and whatnot. Oh my goodness, and that then, is so true though. And then her stepfather, Steve Harvey, spoke on his morning show you saying, yep, he's still a cool guy from what I know. It's a breakup. I'm pretty sure they'll be fine. People break up all the time. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could have broken up with the cost factor. I got to start learning from my children and get out early. I waited way too late. So clearly he's talking about his first wife. Yeah. Because <laughs> maybe the second one. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> Marjorie, she holding it down on lock. Like Do Marjorie you know? not playing on games. Mm. Facts. And if you know, um, Lori has dated so many people in Hollywood. And a couple of notable yeah, people who, yeah. is um, Diddy and Justin Cohn, so father and son. Oh God. King of toxicity future. She's dated Trey Songz. What's the right seeing him? And and then you got the the accused sexual attacker. Oh, yeah. Her track record not looking so bright. Not looking so bright at all. <laughs> and apparently his documentary is going to be worse than R. Kelly. Oh my God. Um, Surviving Trey? Yep. Surviving Trigger. Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I'm in my bag. So... Let's get into the discussion. Do you feel like Lori Harvey is breaking the stereotype 
of double standards. Do I believe Lori Harvey is breaking? Sorry. Okay, sorry. Look at you. Okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, say it one more time. Do you believe that Lori Harvey is breaking um, the stereotype for double standards? I, I, yes, I think she is. I think she is in of our time because, I mean, if a if a man still to this day, if a man is you know seeing a woman consistently they're now turtles, <laughs> turtles and, and, they're, and they're going you know different you know they're doing life together and i just up out of nowhere to my my knowledge you know just like i'm not interested anymore mm -hmm. it, it, and like and they're a great person like on both sides it's kind of like how Oh, good job, Lori! Like you got in there, you got to give a taste, get a piece. Now you get to move on. We wouldn't future. He's not being highlighted the same. If anything, I mean, not him for black women, not yeah, for women. If anything, like they're praising his toxicity. Not from us. Not like from we're us, not but people. Yeah, but I'm it. saying like so. But everybody on all fronts is like proud of Lori, as opposed to just a certain group of folks. Like like mm -hmm. I said, we're not women, but men are like. Yeah, but everybody for Lori is like, yeah, girl. Like, but then I seen I seen people tear her down. I mean, that's why I was just but like, if she changing the double standard, why are they tearing her down? Because she is kind of changing, changing the, the double standard. The double standard, like she's making it like it's okay to not dedicate your youth and your maturity ages um, with one person if you still feel like you could play the field. So I do think she's changing. The double standard. What about you? Definitely. <laughs> she ain't playing no games, okay? And she's not worried about us. She living her best life, and I'm with it because for so long, women have had this this cloud. I want to say under them. Like mm -hmm. if if they date too many people, if they're wearing their option, it's like they're automatically labeled a hoe. Mm -hmm. You're too fast. But like guys do it all the time, and I I'm with it for Lori Harvey. I mean it's sad because I like Michael B. Jordan, but and I feel like he's like probably more heartbroken than her. Yeah, I mean he um, looked at it. He looked it at, his, <laughs> at, the, um, <laughs> at that fight. You know he was going through it, and I understand understandably so because he was he had his heart set on that. But you know hey. Sometimes life just smacks us like the freight train. So what do you guys think on live about this? Anyone think about what? Think about just Lori Harvey. Is she really defining and changing double standards? And drop it in the chat. Let us know. Mm-mm-mm. This is so good. Oh, and our next part. <laughs> That's a perfect transition. Because we're going to the food review. Are we? You ain't even get a chance to eat. You want to take a couple minutes yeah. and get it, get it. Because now I was just get talking. A, get a full, no, get a full. Crab leg. Yeah, take every little piece. <laughs> you know. <laughs> take every little piece first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shrimp is really good. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's so crazy how mukbangs became a thing. Like, people just like to watch people eat. <laughs> I've never ever thought in the 90s that's what we'd be doing in the future. I eat sloppy too. Y'all eat mm -hmm. too clean. We, <laughs> I'm eating too clean. We got a live audience in here. <laughs> <laughs> she said we eating too clean. I'm, I'm just eating my... Mm -hmm. I'm just enjoying the milk. Yeah. Okay. What else? Why do you think... Why do you think that... um? That double standard, like, why do you think that people, certain people, get away with double being like a part of double standard? Um, because of society. I mean, men have always been. I don't want to sound like a. You no, know, it's actually the truth. <laughs> I, was like, I don't want to come off as this, but it's the truth. We live in a patriarchal society, mm -hmm. so there's just certain norms for for gender when it comes to male or females. Females are expected to act a certain way, are expected to, you know, kind of mm -hmm. fall in line and go with the flow and be kind of 
conservative in a way when mm -hmm. it comes to sexuality and everything. Mm -hmm. So when someone like Lori Harvey is doing opposite, it's like, oh, she's doing a lot. What is this? What is this? It's like, she's a hoe automatically. Yeah. You taste that corn. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. You do gotta taste the corn. <laughs> <laughs> the corn is hitting? The corn is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay. So where we get the spoon from? From Crab Bay in, in Maplewood. Okay, we from Jersey. Hello, Jersey. We from Essex County. Essex County. Oh yeah, she say Essex County because she knows she gets the job. <laughs> Call I'm, her. I'm not trying to get dragged today. I know. She she can't be trying to come from Newark. Brick City. It was you going on your Instagram for me, like, <laughs> you were trying to come for North. I was like, oh, she woke up. <laughs> that shows violence. I definitely chose violence. Well, um, Crab Bay, shout out to y'all. Y'all did an amazing job. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that because we paid for our food full price. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, so let's review it. Okay. What's your favorite thing that you taste so far? Um, the muscles in the shirt. Definitely. I think so too. Yeah. You smart. <laughs> you smart. Yeah, you see, I held, I held it down. I know what a mukbang's supposed to do. Okay. Um, I agree with you. Yeah. It's really good. The shrimp is hitting. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> it really hit you. It really hit me. It's <laughs> yeah, so hitting too. Mm -hmm. It's good. Dang, don't you hate when y'all try to suck it? <laughs> suck it? I'm trying. I'm trying to have the, um, <laughs> That's what she said. I wish I had the crackers. I know. I was like hoping that. But um, all right. So let's see. Oh, Charles, let's get to the um, let's get to the game. You got a game for mm -hmm. me. She know I suck at games, but she wanna put me on the spot per usual. <laughs> and give me the answer of games. So we're gonna play a game. And Listen, you are actually really good at games because you're very competitive. I am very competitive. So but um yeah, we're gonna play this game. We don't have a game music for y'all. <laughs> but what? Go ahead. That's our live that's our live stream. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. That's what, she was much needed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen. So, so yeah. I'm explaining the rules of the game. Okay. So we're we're we decided to dedicate this to international travel because we both love to travel. So that's mm -hmm. how I thought of the the game. And we also both love wine. Yep. So Ari has two cups of wine, mm -hmm. one red and one white, and they come from different countries. Mm -hmm. So you gotta guess which country it comes, and you're only allowed three clues. Mm -hmm. You gotta ask a question, mm -hmm. and then try to guess the wine. Which one do you want to start with first? Ask the, the question, white? and then try to huh? So meaning like you'd be like, oh, is this country in? Um, oh, okay. Is this country? Is this country in Asia? Do they do this, like, oh, you know? Right. So, mm -hmm. and we have two, so which one you wanna go with first? The, the red or the white? The red. Okay. Let me clean my palette. <laughs> <laughs> now let me clean my palette. Let me clean my palette. All right. You good in there? Yeah. <laughs> I sound person is okay. All right. Three questions to get clues to guess which country the wine comes from. Oh, 
it is very, very bitter. Okay. Well, not very bitter, but like it go, it don't go down easy. So, okay, is this a country in in Spain? No. 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 South America? No. You only have three, so. so, so. Oh, oh, okay. okay. That's one. That's so, one. So, I'm going to just follow that one. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I got to ask questions? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Is this company owned by a celebrity? No, it's a, it's from a country. Yeah, but no. anybody endorse it? No. Okay. Hey, <laughs> I guess I'm a fail. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll give you a hint. Please, like shit. You should have been giving me a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever used to watch Crocodile Hunter? I don't think so. Okay. Do you watch Wentworth? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's in the, the, um, the UK? Is it in the UK? No. They all know me. <laughs> nah. Okay. Dang. Okay, I'll give you this last clue. They are known for this famous this famous animal that be beating people up. Mm -hmm. Think of an animal that, that got their hands. A bear, a gorilla. <laughs> Seriously? Who got the hands? Yeah. An animal? An animal that got the hands. You give up? Yeah. Australia, a kangaroo? Kangaroo? <laughs> <laughs> wow, and I almost said Australia. Wow. Okay. Kangaroo. You should have said the pocket. Like. No, nah, because I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't. It's all right. It took you forever to get that. <laughs> But which, yeah, can, which, did, which did, animal did, got the hands? I don't know, bitch. I got it from the crocodile hunter. And Wentworth. Wentworth. Look, I put it in the comments, but you can't see it. Oh. Oh, Australia. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm going to get the next one. Okay. Let's go ahead and taste that. Let me clear my palate. She said, let me clear my palate. Yeah, I need, we need the crackers next time. They need to provide it. <laughs> they need to provide gloves. <laughs> Let me see y'all's wet. <laughs> Why do you use like Michael Jackson? Okay. <laughs> All right, we gotta get to this. <laughs> oh, this one is sweet. Er, definitely. Okay. Um, full body. Um. This one is from this country. Is it from this 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 country? No. Dang. Okay. That would have been too easy. <laughs> <laughs> um. Give me a hint. No. I'm gonna give you a hint at the end. You gotta ask another question. Okay. 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 Which famous person came out of this country? Trevor Noah. Oh! Okay. So we in Africa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm making sure we in Africa. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, which country? <laughs> she said, That was a good question, though. That is a good question. Thank you. Now you gotta give me a hint. You um, said Nelson Mandela was the president of this country. Mm. <laughs> mm. Listen, studio audience, let me clear them. I gave her the biggest clue. I said Trevor Noah, then I said I didn't Nelson give Mandela. Give me that clue. I asked the question. Yeah, is it South Africa? Yep. Oh, why? Oh, why? Cool. <laughs> I got it. I got it, y'all. Where's the um? I need I need the sound effects. Studio audience. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Y'all are hilarious. Hilarious. Wait, what's the the clapping? Woo! 
Where the hookah at? <laughs> Who said that? Ray yeah, right and rejoice. Oh, I don't know. I'm, we're not really. I don't. I mean, she's the hookah queen. So. Nobody asked me, so I just left it. But that's definitely my brother. <laughs> <laughs> But we gonna get there, we gonna get there. Okay, so let's switch into our main topic. Sure. Which is double standards. Mm -hmm. You know we gotta come with the correct definition for from Webster's Dictionary. A set of principles that apply differently and usually are more rigorous to one group of people or circumstance to another. Especially a code of morals that apply more severe standards to sexual behavior to women than men. Oh, so Webster's just just straight up got to the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Ari, what's your thoughts on that? What's your thoughts on double standards? How do you feel about double standards? I feel like, you know, it's something that's commonly accepted because it's kind of like, what can you do about it? It's always been there. But then you got, you know, certain circumstances when people really fight for and you know eradicate that like mm -hmm. making sure that nobody is subjected to it but I really just feel like it depends on the situation like like I feel like there's double stand like with the glass ceiling in the workplace like how much a woman makes um, less than of a man in the same position the double standards are there does it always you know like are people treated fairly not all the time mm -hmm. but it's not it's acceptable you know um but so do you feel like it's always with gender no i don't think it's always with only with gender it's definitely between classes of people mm -hmm. and um sexuality sexual preference like that whole nature okay um yeah I mean, you. The next question was give give an example of a double standard. <laughs> or, or matter of fact, let me let me remix the question. Mm -hmm. Give an example of a double standard that affects you personally in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, what's something you always wanted to do, mm -hmm. but you probably resisted, or you didn't do it because you thought of it as a double standard. I mean, I just remember like. I remember like working at um, or interviewing at a, a, a production company and I was asked like who was going to pick up the girls mm -hmm. like as opposed to if a, if a man um, like that's gender but it's like that's the occurrence like them asking me you know you would ask them that. Yeah. I'm gonna ask them how they how they gonna how they gonna um, how they gonna if somebody were to get sick, are you still gonna be good? Like if somebody yeah, like that's, that's a lot of single fathers out here. <laughs> Hello, <coughs> I can't even find one that isn't. Yeah. So you know, that's a good example yeah. of one. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say race. Race. Race is definitely a double standard. I okay. mean, for me as someone who loves natural hair. He wears my locks out, so it's an issue when I mm -hmm. have my hair done a certain way. Oh yeah? yeah well, I've been in, in job places. Mm -hmm. Not now, thank God. Okay. But before, okay. where it was just like, all right, it's coming off as too much to them. Mm -hmm. Like I need you to like, you know, be more groomed, and it's mm -hmm. like, but this this is my natural hair. I wear. What's that conversation like? It's like, um, basically. In a and you want an ebonics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like straight in here. Look more presentable. Like you can't just be out here wearing a, a afro and it's mm -hmm. not tame. Your hair is not tame or it's not kept. And it's like to me, my twist out at that time was popping, mm -hmm. but to them it wasn't company standards. So that's a huge double standard when it comes to race is hair in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I dealt with. Hair, what you wear, what, what I wear, um, like, even with makeup, you know, 
if if it was a white person who came with their face beat with like maybe brighter colors, it wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> but let a black person yeah, come. Yeah, that's the issue. <laughs> you think so? I think you know, like, my hair. Oh, it's well for you, but I'm talking about like, <laughs> like let's say if I just got bold and I decided to wear like green eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're definitely, I'm definitely gonna get a lot of stares. Mm -hmm. People are gonna look at me. People are probably gonna make passive aggressive comments towards me. But when a white person does it, yeah. it's like, oh, that's just Heather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. I mean, but what are we doing to like, I was, and I was just, you see, you be knowing. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask you, because with the rise, you know, us as millennials, first of all, Gen Zers, mm -hmm. super progressive. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they're ready to cancel everyone. We got an episode on cancel culture. Go check that out. It's already out. They just changing the, the norm of America. So I'm saying with the rise of like millennials and the next generation, do you think double standards will even exist? Um, or people will be more aware of them, or they'll try to like abolish them. I mean, if double standards don't exist, how could the world, how could, yeah, the world, like, not have somebody to fall back on, like, and blame, like, that, that stuff isn't fair? But then that's like eradicating systems, so. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's gonna. How would, how would it be? But how would it be eradicated? If you need that to like, well, who said you need that? If they feel like it's necessary to keep the country going, like competition, um, you know, always keeping certain folks in their place, like being in control of like how humanity sees each other. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that by implementing these rules where certain classes of people are treated unfairly. Why wouldn't you try to? Keep I just feel like the fight to not, like, to, to fight to have it gone mm -hmm. is going to be a long and strenuous one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because we still fight for racism. So it's like, yeah. Martin yeah. Luther King was marching in suits and Coretta was in kitten hills. <laughs> in 90 degree weather. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> yeah. And we're still dealing with it. Yeah. So, I see so, what you're saying. It's kind of like, but then, um, Gen Zers are the ones who really like are doing work. Like it was not about it was nothing about pronouns before. Now it's kind of like a requirement at a job if you don't, you know. So okay. Everyone trying to be diverse in it, and but that's what we get into the conversation about. That that when there's a backing, when there's like mm. a support system behind, like behind the movement, behind the initiative, because then all of a sudden it becomes important. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden it becomes necessary. It needs to be mandatory. It needs to be like, like freedom, freedom, freedom. <laughs> like, it's cause people, they ain't trying to get canceled. But it's like, just like how you said, we still fight for racism and the, not the double standard of a workplace or when you're at a store or, you know, when you're at a bank, like who, what, there was like a celebrity I forget who it was. A man. He was, he was held. He was. That was um, Ryan Coogler from. Um, yeah, Spider director. Held like, you know, like he was a detainee. Got having bread and like the person money, was money, money, like Marvel money. Okay, hello. Did you not see, see Black Panther? Panther? <laughs> Did you not? I missed that. Like that was a that was a proud moment in you Black culture. Me? Like and then he was just killing it ever since. So yeah. still like. And, and then when you got like, like when you started talking about the pronouns for the LGBTQIA plus community, mm -hmm. that like we they got a whole law passed. Yep. Okay. I'm all for the same sex marriage law. Great. Think was well overdue. Um, and I also don't want you know people to to be getting attacked and targeted and there not be any justice done. So I'm glad you know the hate, you know the hate part of it is is done. I'm not laughing at that. <laughs> don't don't drag me. 
Pride. It's Pride Month. Please don't drag me. Exactly, but you see, okay, so here we go. So it's like, don't drag me. Like, yeah. y'all got an army. Like, y'all literally, just, you literally got an army just like with a bunch of missiles just pointed at any and everybody at any given time. <laughs> Ready to like, ready to just fire at us. Yeah, the avatar too. If we make a mistake, mm-hmm. if we if we come, you know, if we say something that is politically incorrect, mm-hmm. anything, and it's like, and again, the law is passed. The George Floyd bill is still. Is it even on the table or is it on the nightstand? It passed. Is it back in the kitchen? Like, where is? It? <laughs> like, why? Oh, for real? Like, why? Has it not been passed? It's the fact that it was 2022 20, and the lynching bill passed. <laughs> it's like, um. Or how about them just taking a, a warrant off of people after they've been died, after they've been dead for since, uh, for decades? Wow, I didn't know about that. That's wild. Yeah, I just wow. learned that about in Tulsa. A man who was fleeing, who was a billionaire down in Tulsa, all black, Greenwood district. And he was running like through towns though because he was, you know, had a warrant out for his arrest. And he passed away um, like years <laughs> years ago. And they're just now t- withdrawing a warrant that they had um, on him from 40 years ago. That's wild. Because Greenwood's getting popular again. So, you know, the double standard, I just think it's the army that also makes a change. Because like I was saying, we're still waiting for the George Floyd bill to pass. We still wait. I mean, we got a couple things, a couple steps that's been made. But y'all got a whole law. Like, people of that, you know, that community has a whole law. Mm-hmm. And, and, and have people educate. You You have no critical race theory is still being the controversial in school systems. And mm-hmm. yet, we're supposed to teach our... You know, our youth that it's okay to, you know, be yourself in any forms. Like, it's encouraged. So, why isn't racial, uh, critical race theory uh, encouraged? Like, exactly. why? Why? That should just be a given. So, you know, that's what I mean about the double standards across, like, communities, marginalized communities, because here we are, <coughs> black people, we can't even get a class about something that we know for a fact happened. And, you know, Jinx. <laughs> right, and we've been talking. We've been talking the same all day, and it's like, and then you have another community that's getting like, like the back end. But don't you think? I mean, you guys can revisit our first episode from season three, "Stop the Oppression Olympics." Mm-hmm. That's what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. The only reason why we're not on that level is because we are bickering to see who's oppressed the most. <laughs> So until we get on one accord, it's like, oh, you know, black females, we're dealing with racism and sexism. And white men is like, okay, but I'm a black man and I'm getting shot by the cops. And then black LGBTQ plus is like, oh, I'm queer and I'm black, so I'm dealing with homophobia and racism. And it's Mm -hmm. like, all right, let's just cut (laughs) all of that. We all deal with racism. Yeah. You don't gotta. You don't have to agree with someone's lifestyle, but I do believe in respecting someone. But and I if and if we're all uh, trying to get to the same thing, like we use the example on season one. I'm um, saying season one, season three, episode one, South Depression Olympics. Mm-hmm. How like you know, um, MLK was Christian, Malcolm X was Muslim, James Baldwin was queer. But when it came to racism, they all was like, oh no, we we yeah. in this together. Yeah, yeah. So that just made them great, but and you brought up a good, you brought up a good point. That's a conversation that needs to be had happen, and I think it will get there. Probably not when our generation, like our generation, uh-huh. it's kind of like what Tupac say. Not to just quote Pop because it's Pop, but like <laughs> I ain't saying I'm gonna change the world, but I promise you, I'll spark the brain that will change the world. So we're gonna do like the work. And we like yeah. we're we're like basically doing the work for the next generation mm-hmm. to change, and that's what the generations before us did. I mean, I kind of would like to see the change. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't be here, but I mean, it's a little it's a little change. I would like that. I, I mean, like compared that. to compared to what my um, grandparents and people of different generations had to deal with. I see. It's been a, it's been a lot of progress, a lot. Mm-hmm. It's not what we want it to be, but it's like 
We gotta, we gotta um, appreciate the little things. Cause you know. <laughs> and honestly, if we don't do for ourselves, okay. who gonna do for us? Nobody. Exactly. I mean, but why do we always gotta do for ourselves? So I'm gonna um, kind of piggyback. Okay. Um, what can we do as millennials mm -hmm. to lessen or eliminate double standards? Right? Sure. You said what? What can we do as millennials to lessen um, double standards? Um, what can we do as millennials to lessen double standards? Or eliminate it. But we already discussed how it ain't going to be eliminated for a while. Right. I'm kind of not even thinking... I mean, I guess I was trying to debate if I feel like double standards do need to be like mm. eliminated. I kind of was trying to I got you. figure out if that would be the case because at the same time, double standards uh, across the board can get you where you want to be sometimes. Why like you can't benefit. Like, like Like affirmative action. Like, you think affirmative action is a double standard? To some folks. Oh, yeah, okay. To some people, that it's like, oh. Well, it's only to one person, one group of people. <laughs> if we keep but, it. Okay, yeah, but it's still an example that you may not have considered. Nah, not at all. Okay. I've never thought of affirmative action being a double standard. To certain, to no, 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 I get what you're saying, but I'm saying before you brought up, you opened my horizons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would have never thought of it. When I think of double standards, I don't think of affirmative action at all. Right. You should. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, think of it. We gotta do an episode. No, because like, like, to a certain group of people, Affirmative action is a way that people of color, black people, can get into certain spaces just off the color of their skin, not really their work, mm -hmm. but they got, that plays a part, but it's like, okay, we need to fill a quota. Like, think yeah. about it, like, where do these Karen and Kim stories come from? They ain't just coming from, ooh, Goo Goo Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> like, not Goo Goo Gaga, though. <laughs> like, ah, like, this teacher hate. It's it's a bunch of like those it like those systemic things that play a part in why they feel how they feel. So, but don't do you agree with me that that's only to one group? Oh yes. Yeah, okay, part. definitely. I don't feel that way. Nobody in. But now in nowadays, the affirmative community. action ain't for black people only. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's for every. It's for diversity and inclusion. That's why I said we can never keep it <laughs> because. Our people, like the community and the people that stand behind it is the ones that's going to get it. So yeah. if the Asian community is saying, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're being mistreated. Fix this. Okay. Wait, what's the comment saying? I see a couple comments. Let me see. If they're saying that, like, it's something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same with like, what? Asian community, Indian community. If there's Indian as an Indian or Native Native American. Um, oh right, because she just joined. She oh. can't see previous ones. Um You said what? I said Indian as an Indian or, or Native American? Native American No, I meant Indian. Okay. Not Native American. I'm indigenous. No, she's talking about like Indians, people from India. Oh, I'm saying yeah. Native American. Yeah. I'm calling indigenous now. Oh, that's oh, a oh. See? Yeah. I mean, they are indigenous people, but uh, also, is, is Native American wrong to say? It's not politically correct. Know. Is it politically correct? I don't know. I don't. I don't think so anymore. I think you have to say like indigenous. Oh wow. I don't know. I'll ask a biopop person. <laughs> exactly. So no. I'm sorry. Talk about. I'm tearing these up. She going in. Um. Yeah. It's like good though. If you got a yeah, it is good. If you got a community and y'all really in that fight, that's what's gonna happen. So if they want an equality with with black folk, 
and they had a team behind them, they're gonna speak it, they're gonna get considered. And black folks are not opposing. We're not saying give us our own and you know, and leave them to fight for their own. Mm -hmm. We're saying join on in. We all, like you said, like we, we all, all the world. We all trying to get yeah, together. Like, hey, uh -uh. you know. <laughs> so, what do you think? So you you for sure that those standards need to go away? I I want them to go away, but can we be honest? Are they gonna go away? No, because they're ingrained in the in the beginning of America. But what would we gain if if double standards were gone? I just feel like if double standards. Okay, I guess I could speak for I could speak for a specific type of double standards. Okay. If I'm talking gender, mm -hmm. male and female, and I'm talking mm -hmm. re relationships, mm -hmm. I feel like double standards should definitely go away when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, because I just feel like, you know, what's the point of judging someone in a way? You know, if they if you can live your life like that and you get no um you know, no backlash, mm -hmm. then let someone else live their life the same way. <laughs> so that's the only way that I feel like that's definitely gonna get eliminated. Just because of just dating in general and the way this this dating pool is and mm -hmm. people are embracing this toxicity culture. <laughs> that I don't see I, don't, I really don't see like double standards of unless you're like Unless you're like super conservative or, you know, yeah. I don't see it. I don't. I see it going away okay. because like a lot of and and we could we could look at the Justin LaBoys, the Justin LaBoys of the pools. Like a lot of these females is moving like dudes <laughs> already. So can you just imagine and like by the time like your girls are, are like teenagers and they're dating. It's gonna be. It's, it's literally gonna be like. Look at Ari's face. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I had you thinking that, but you. But and that's why I say that people like you who found your person, and you're about to get married to them. Y'all, mm -hmm. y'all lucky. Y'all tapped out early because y'all got experiences. I mean, am I not right? Wait, say that again. No, I'm saying people that's that's like not in the dating pool. Mm -hmm. They're lucky because they don't got experience. I'm trying. She don't understand. She don't. Yeah. So y'all yeah. understand harsh. Listen, it's not supposed to be hard. It's not, but it's it is. But if you was in this dating pool and you were dating, you would be like, "Yo, mm -hmm. what the heck is going mm -hmm. on?" And and you're blessed to not to not have to add that extra stress to your your other stresses. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to double standards in relationships with gender, I feel like that's gonna be definitely be on it. If we're talking bigger systems. I mean, what what equal pay? I see people trying to trying to make strides, but if we're talking about like political, like just look at Roe Ro versus Wade. Shit. You're they over here saying females can't get abortions, but they're not telling men to get vasectomies. Mm -hmm. You know that's a double standard in itself. Mm -hmm. So I think it all depends on systems, to be honest. And what do you think? What this system going to do? We ain't going to be able to do it. You're not gonna be able to get rid of it. Get rid of what double standard? Oh no, not at all. Because because it's it's literally like it's like planting a, a plant. Like the seeds and the roots is already in whiteness. Mm -hmm. So and when it grows, it just becomes more and more. If you don't kill it from the root, it's not. It's not gonna, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like I don't know if you guys see with this whole Roe v versus Wade, whether you're pro choice or pro life, but I think. Like now, you gotta pay attention because a lot of these policies are gonna—they're gonna try to reverse them. Mm -hmm. If you've seen Barack post, you know how like political people—they have to um, post something when a big thing happens. Mm -hmm. So like you know, Michelle put her statement out, mm -hmm. Barack put her statement out on Twitter, and then a um, a senator from Texas responds to it and says okay now that we got roe v versus way let's work on plessy versus ferguson and brown versus board of education yeah they want it back to segregation to segregation and it's like you're you're saying this on twitter a public platform so you don't care oh, yeah. it's like nowadays it's like the racism straight blatant they don't it's, it's no hiding it anymore mm -hmm. Like it's like, all right, cool. We got this victory. Oh, we going, we going against Brown versus Board of Education. I saw a Confederate flag today mm. on nineteen. Oh, every every time you come, if you come to my house, you'll see like a um, 
it's every day. They're, they're having a Trump rally and like a, a White Lives Matter thing on 46. Oh my God. Every day. I know, but how long is that gonna go? And it's like- Because they're trying to reelect Trump again. And what people don't understand is- You wanna join us mug man? Cause you just, I don't know if our, if our, um, no. Okay. I don't wanna be on camera. But, um, but they're like, um, oh, vote Trump. A lot of people were saying vote Trump back because you know, Biden's not doing what he says he's going to do, blah, 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 whatever. But do you not realize that this was all Trump's fault and this is all what Trump wanted to do? Biden right, just, that's why he had just to inherit it. But here's the thing about Biden, here's the thing about Trump. What people, what we need to realize is like presidents aren't saviors. Nope. Right. They're, They're not. Presidents. They're literally just the face of the Supreme Court, the laws and everything. Mm -hmm. So there are people like, oh, why Biden ain't do this? Why you not doing this? It's not him. It's some people like the legislation behind them, you know? He's just yeah, like that, he's just that black dude. <coughs> that that big black guy that. is on the Supreme Court. Who? Clarence Thomas? Cool, cool he's, talk? He's yeah. been in. <laughs> he should have. I wish COVID was taken off. No, that's. I didn't say that. <laughs> Government, I didn't say that. Shit, I did. <laughs> but, um. But, um. I got I got a sign. Sign. Oh my god. Um, but double double standards played a part in that. And what? And Roe v versus what Wade. What we're doing? No, what they're trying to do? Just just pass the bottle. <laughs> oh yeah, now that you know it's from. The reason why I was keeping it so private is because she's been here since earlier, and I didn't want her to know for the game. But um, no, I said it played a part in where we are today like how we here and he's even being a thought of again like what's that about who who's talking trump. about trump oh yeah that ain't never going nowhere that's always gonna be people he biden won the election and people was just like trump <laughs> it's like um this is it's, that ain't going nowhere yeah <laughs> at all but i just feel like whether you're pro-choice or pro-life I just need you to be pro-choice or pro-life for all realms. If you're gonna be pro-choice for, if you're gonna be pro-life for abortion, you gotta be pro-life for black lives. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I feel like now, like religion has played, they're trying to separate, they're trying to target religion in general. Uh -huh. Especially the Christianity, Christian religion, where people, um, what, what's this person saying? Facts. Facts. No, they're trying to really target Christians to put us against each other. When at the end of the day, yeah, because white Jesus believes that if you're a Democrat, you're the devil. Yeah, literally. I did, but it's just like, first of all, Jesus wasn't even white. We're really talking, <laughs> Middle Eastern <laughs> person, like, right? yeah. and it's just hate. And I'm just saying that, like, I, thankfully we're from Jersey and we're from a a state that's. You know, it's not really going to affect us, but think about people in the South and, yeah, and people yeah. in the Midwest. Well, and then again, you don't know because a lot of people are saying that even though Murphy is down for, you know, keeping whatever, how it is, mm -hmm. the people that's backing him is uh, playing against him. Mm -hmm. okay, so but people, they might outvote him on that. The people have been against Murphy. So first of all, he been killing him. If you, if you just, President, I said President, <laughs> Governor Murphy, Murphy can post his hand. And go in the comments, they're like, You fascist? <laughs> <laughs> you this and that. Like, like, they just be ripping him, like, yeah. tearing him apart. It's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Yeah. He, he, he ran on, I mean, we have a couple episodes that speak about Murphy's work. Mm -hmm. um, episode four, um, Politics was the 411 featuring my LB Joe. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. He broke down, like, that was one of my favorite ones. Yeah, that was a really good one. He was really insightful mm -hmm. sure. um, on politics, especially since we, we know politics, but we don't know it. Like, yeah. We ain't study it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that was insightful. And Murphy has done a lot, mm -hmm. especially I can respect him because he ran on legalizing weed and he did it. <laughs> he did it. He did it. But he was like consistent with that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like what's the um, I'm trying to like take all of these thoughts and bring them back into the topic when it comes to eliminating double standards. Yeah. Um, 
I think this it's like systems was placed were were already placed before we were even here. Correct. And it's gonna be tough to do it, but I I believe that the next generation can do it. Like I ain't gonna be the I ain't gonna be the one to change the world, but I, I'm gonna spark the brain that does. Can you first see how they might? Um, like if since we saying we wanted to to end, how would you go about it? I would go about it with legislation, mm-hmm. policy. Okay. Because yeah. once policy is in, but I'm talking like you gotta start from grassroots. You gotta go to the beginning, back mm-hmm. to the basics. You gotta go to grassroots. And when I mean grassroots, I mean lobbying at Capitol Hill, protesting, all of that. Mm. And then you gotta work towards passing the law. Because once the law is 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 passed, like, you gotta follow the law. Or you gonna end up in jail, right? You know. So definitely lobbying out. And of course, education is always the first one because if you don't know how you're going to change it, mm-hmm. so you got to yeah. educate yourself. All the answers are in a book. In a book. What is it? Read a book. Read a book. Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't Wait, know no, no, do it. Let me see. <laughs> no, we're saying. We want to see. Read a book. Read a book. Read a mother effing book. Read oh, a, you don't know that commercial? Like, yeah, on BT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find it on YouTube. Pass me a piece. Read a book. Read a book. Read a book. Or like, I'm talking about. I wish, I wish my LB would join this live. Jamal, mm-hmm. I should have texted him to join it. But um, me and Jamal read was book, me and Jamal was talking the other day about the United Negro Fund okay. <laughs> and, their, and their famous slogan. A mine is a terrible thing. To waste. Hello. It be like two o'clock in the morning. That commercial come on BT. Cause they wanna, they telling you to, they tell you the truth. They telling you to get off the TV. It starts, it starts, it starts with education. And education don't have to be a book, cause everyone's not a reader. Mm-hmm. You don't know this, Ari? Hello, John. You never, you know this, right? Yeah. Look, y'all don't read a book, right? The comments. Look. Like, read a book, read a book, read a mother effing book. Okay. So, like, I lost brain cells watching that. Is it telling you to read a book, read a book, read a mother effing book? But it don't always have to be with, um, because cause I feel like reading isn't for everyone. Some people like prefer Audible. Some people yeah. read it, it's not for everybody, but some at people, the ages you're gonna, we want to penetrate, you know, you should be an avid. Reader, yeah. but what if you're a visual learner? So watching a documentary for work. There's other ways that like you don't have to just be re- reading a book because reading it isn't for everyone. It's not, but it's the fundamentals. I think, I think it's the fundamentals. Mm-hmm. The audible. You, you, how can you understand if you don't know what Some you're saying? Some people have to listen. Exactly. Some Some people people audio, auditory, visual. Yeah. Or co- um, kinesthetic, which is like hands-on. It depends on the way you learn, yeah. and I get what you're saying because that works. For, like I feel like you should just be read. Like when I, I meet, like to read. No, when I meet like, someone like who in a book, when I meet I like someone the, who want to talk to me about race, but they haven't read the Fire Next Time, it's like all right, when you you know. Yeah. But it, it well, depends on it depends on your learning style. Some people. Well, this was a, a great conversation. Um, what the comments saying? Um, we gotta wrap up on our live soon, Cheryl. Yeah. What the comments say? I'm not in. I think people just join in. Okay, cool. No, I thought this was back. great. Let us know. Um, definitely. Shame. Well, not shameless plug because this is our business. So I, I'm. We we shout out every other right. business. So it's time for us to shout out ours, mm-hmm. the Millennial Podcast. We have episodes coming up. We have a website. We have follow us on Instagram for all our updates. Look at our black business highlight to see other black businesses in Jersey that you want to support. Um, what else are you not missing? I think just continue to, you know, give us a phrase. Mm-hmm. Um, listen to the episodes that we currently have live. Okay. Um, and then continue to be interactive with us on social media. And we'll definitely keep you posted on more content. We hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you leave comments, share with a friend, 
and then we'll see you next time. Yeah, and let us know if you want us to do this again because we could do it with a dip. We should do it with African or Caribbean food next. <laughs> that would be cool. So let us know. But it's been great. Yes. And please check out our season three on YouTube. And yeah, until until we drop our episodes. All right. See y'all.